guys, good Tuesday morning. Jerry Miller and welcome to Real Talk, an insider's guide to real estate. Life in the pursuit of happiness. We are live in Charlottesville, the commonwealth of the country and the world on the I Love Seville Network presented by Yes Royalty Partners and Keller Williams Alliance. So much to cover on the Tuesday edition of the program. We will talk um, market conditions. We will talk uh, interest rates rising, inventory shortening, and we will get into the Keith Smith brain and try to come <laughs> out alive. <laughs> On the Tuesday edition. Yeah, of the are we going to talk about my inability to tweet? Is that going to come up we, too? We may talk uh, <laughs> Keith Smith and his Twitter thumb. So I don't know if you've seen it. Perhaps you have. Perhaps you have not. Bill McChenzie, we'll get to your comments, hey, sir. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Um, Sean Tubbs, Town Crier Productions, Great Eastern Management Company, has filed plans to redevelop Seminole Square Shopping Center. Folks, 352 units potentially on the site of Seminole Square Shopping Center, located where, Keith? In the city of Charlotte. In the city of Charlottesville. <laughs> located in the city of Charlottesville. Nicholas Erpe, good morning, my friend. Hey, Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas. We will not be able to join you today because we've got a, an event in Richmond, but good luck this afternoon. They're doing an event at... Um, Vitae Spirits yeah. of Guest Appreciation Day. Yeah. Today, Imanyana. Fantastic um, organization, fantastic brand. I'm a huge brand. gin fan. I'm, 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 it's just too bad that I've got to go do a, a little event in Richmond tonight. That live event concept at one of your sponsors, a brilliant idea. Whoever came up with that should be applauded and accoladed. Okay, uh, hold, hold the time Judah out. Judah Whitcaller is our director. It is tomorrow, Nicholas Erpe says, the Vitae Spirits. Oh. Not today. Oh. It is tomorrow. Um, thank you. What time, Nic what time was that? Tomorrow? Nicholas Erby, let us know what time of the feed, and we'll give it a little plug or two here on the uh, Real yeah, Talk Tuesday edition. So good morning, my friend. Hello. Yeah, hey, how you doing this morning? I, I you know, I, I say this every time we just do Batman and Robin. I absolutely, I love the roundtables. It's great information out there, but as far as the fun -o meter goes for me, I just love these, these, these amano amano uh did I do that right? Yeah, mano y mano. <laughs> there you go. Conversations on that end of it, but uh, yeah. So the kickoff on on Mr. Tubbs, he's coming in on on uh, Friday along with Neil Williamson to uh, the, the Sir Neil Williamson, I should say, uh, to take a little bit of a, a deeper dive in it. What I got myself into a little bit of trouble on Twitter because of my, as Jerry refers to him, my fat Twitter thumbs. I don't think the, that was a fat Twitter no, thumbs No, no, no. Uh, Nicholas was, Erpe says 5.30 tomorrow at Vitae Spirits for that event. I might, we might, we might make that. because Keith our, Smith's going to make it, Nicholas Yeah, Erpe. our event in Richmond ends, I think, around 3 or 4, and we can shoot straight into town and uh, end up with a cocktail. So I, for some reason, had it on my calendar for today. So thank you for keeping me straight. Look at this, everybody's keeping Smith straight. It's uh, when viewers uh, and, and social media, social media celebrities like yourself have viewers and followers, you gotta be on your P's and Q's. Journalists like Alison Rabel will correct you online. Yeah, she did correct me. Yeah, so I was doing a typical Smith five things at once uh, uh, in the morning and I typed in BOS, which stands for Board of Supervisors instead of City Council. So, so. But the, the, the essence of the tweet um, was that uh, I believe there was a comment on there that uh, it lead to imply anyway that there was some formal public or or jurisdictional approval on that, meaning the, a political approval, which is not the case. This is a by right subdivision, and we've talked um, or a project we've talked on and off on Real Talk many a times about the difference between buy right and, and rezonings on this end of it. So I think the, threat, the, the Twitter thread was about how long was it gonna take and what my thoughts were on it and so forth and so on. But I, I did make an error, so I'm here to publicly um, apologize for that error. It is in the city of Charlottesville, not. Now, it is awfully close to the Albemarle County border. Yeah, border line. Stonefield the line. This is yeah. just inside it in the it's, city. It's literally just this, inside. It. Okay, so give us the nitty gritty. Yeah, so I mean, there is not much nitty gritty to, to talk about. That the the reality of it is, um, and this is a, an administrative process. More than likely, this is going to take somewhere between eighteen months to two years to get through the site plan process. 
then probably about another year to do the horizontal work, that's the development work, and then about another year to two years to do the vertical work. This is a multifamily project. It's an apartment project on it, which I believe is also um, a low-income tax credit project, which means that it will be for housing affordability on, on that end of it. Uh, so this, this is probably three to five years, closer to five years before something happening. And what I was trying to say in the, in the feed, in the Twitter feed, which I screwed up, um, is what we really need to work on is changing red tape into green tape. We've been talking about this for years, right? There's, there's really no reason that this project should take two years to go through the site plan. And just to put it into perspective, the project we did on Nassau Street, we meaning the land trust, these were money given by the city right to go ahead and do it and it took us about a year and a half just to get through site plans so we can pull a building permit so it, it, we lost a year and a half of trying to go ahead and and provide homes uh for the for the housing affordability crisis that we're in at the moment 352 units and seminal square shopping center yeah. what do you what do you make of that yeah uh, on a bus line yeah. Um, very close to it some uh, government employers. It checks all the boxes. In the urban area. It checks all the boxes. It's, it's exactly, wherever, where exactly where the comprehensive plan. But the point I was trying to make is this is, not a this is not a public hearing process. So Keith and Jerry can't get up there and oppose it. We can, we can oppose it, but this is purely a, a ministerial red tape it checks the boxes and it'll go down the line over time it, it well technically if we want to get smith into even more trouble here which i'm about ready to do i love when you do that so another thing most folks don't know and we'll look for ned and neil to verify that they can get that site plan approved and it's and it's good for five years so they can just get it approved and sit they don't have to go vertical they don't have to go horizontal um, I, I don't know the particulars of it. I'm just putting on an old developer builder hat on that end of it. But knowing about what's going on and the rezoning and, and so forth and so on in the city, this is a smart move on their part from a business perspective. I'd get this thing done. I'd get the site plan done. The term, the, the term du jour, the technical term, is called entitled, right? So it's entitled. So what could happen, right? I own this piece of property, and then all this re, there's new zoning amendments and all these new rules come up that gone, and it could be more restrictive than what's currently here, potentially. So it's a smart move. Get it, get it entitled. It's just a process. While Bill McChensey says, where will all the children go to school? All the kids on Mickey Drive currently go to, Mitchy Drive currently go to Greenbrier. This is the smallest school from a size standpoint in the city of Charlottesville. That's okay. something that certainly will be need to work out. I can firsthand attest to that. I actually gave a couple of presentations, uh, little chats to some of the young folks over there, the AP folks over there about math and- There's how no AP folks in Greenbrier? Okay, I got my wrong school. Yeah. What's, the, what's the school? AP is high school. Oh, so no. yeah, no, these, these, no, these, these were sixth graders. I mean, the teacher's a friend of mine. Advanced placement, AP. Well, they were advanced math. Yeah, uh, sure. could be honors. Maybe it was honors. Yeah, yeah. Greenbrier. That's another correction. Look at look. Greenbrier at is an elementary school. Yeah. So uh, what's, what's the school right right behind the uh, uh, right by um, uh, Chick Fil A on Twenty Nine North? Chick Fil A on Twenty Nine North. You know that school? Who what, who knows that school? Yeah, the Chick Fil A on Twenty Nine North. Yeah, that's the school I was. I thought that was Greenbrier. I AP is so advanced placements. High schools. High school. Got it. Yeah, high schools. Neil Williamson sharing the article from the Daily Progress in the feed. Good morning, sir. Neil Williamson watching the program right now. For what it's worth, statistically, apartments generate fewer children than other forms of housing. Sure. And he says, Keith, it's Woodbrook. Woodbrook, thank you very much. Bill says, or Walker Upper Elementary. No, it's Wood, it was Woodbrook. I got it wrong. Another one I got wrong. Yeah, I'm so great today. Neil Williamson. Um, Spring fever. What do you make of the development? I'm sure he's pro pro uh, development. He's pro 352 new units. It's in the urban area, so it's it's important to emphasize this. Okay, it's important to emphasize this. We all we can be in favor of development when infrastructure can accommodate said development. Schools, roads, 
are good examples. This particular project by Great Eastern Management, redeveloping the Seminole Square Shopping Center, which is antiquated and a forgotten shopping center, is the type of development we need to be in favor of. The infrastructure is there. The roads are there. It's in the urban ring, and we desperately need new housing. I can understand um, apprehension and concern associated with development down Avon Extended, parts of Scottsville, Eastern Almaro County, development associated with lack of infrastructure. But I cannot understand, cannot understand opposition to this project when it literally is in the city of Charlottesville, in the urban area, the designated growth area, at a time when we have zero housing stock. And there's one component you missed. What's that? It's zoned to do it. Right. This is, this is and it's on a bus line. It's on a transportation line. And the point I was trying to make in my infantile way on Twitter was there isn't an approval process here. It, we can have this conversation, we can have this fodder, we can go back and forth on this stuff, and you can oppose it. It's not going to stop it. There is no opposition process through this. This is purely in the control of the property owner and the process that is established. Now, in saying that, this is why being participating in this new rezoning rewrite is so important because you've got a comprehensive plan that says this is where they want it. You've got the zoning that says this is where they want it. They have a subdivision or a site plan ordinance that says these are the boxes you need to check on that end of it. So what's important about being engaged in this new rezoning rewrite, and it's either going to be a zoning text amendment or it's going to be whole new re a, whole new, a whole new zoning ordinance, but they will go through this and I will lose my mustache come because it's it's gonna it's gonna happen and it's probably gonna happen before the deadline that we have at this at this point. Neil Williamson is shaving your mustache live on oh, air no, 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 on no. real Time talk. Out. Stop! I've never agreed to him shaving my mustache. Well, I, you did I'm agree saying, to it live on air. I, I think did I got agree talked to. into that. I agreed that I would shave my mustache. Yeah, so. live on air. Fine. Live on air with Neil Williamson in the house. Not a problem. I have not had this off my face since 1985, but that's fine. We uh, Neil ahead. is licking his chops right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, know he, I know he is. Licking his chops. So we're getting... Uh, we're we getting. to think about how we're going to do that, by the way. Agner Hurt? Is that the one you were referring no, to? No, no. It was Woodbrook. I, I, it was Woodbrook. I had a brain fart. It was... It was. Woodbrook is the one behind um, yeah, the Coors, Coors Brothers. Coors Brothers. That's the okay, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So I have a, a, a running friend who's a math teacher who teaches i call it ap it's probably the wrong term okay. but but honors or what whatever it is and it's an interesting story to that if you ever want to hear it one day i'll tell you about it i would love to i would love to hear it so one uh, development project that has certainly got a lot of folks talking are you following the stribbling avenue project i am so that's a rezoning right so yeah. so that's a rezoning so that is you know so the so so those who are not myself or Neil or, or Sean or you or, or, or folks that are in the, the best way to think about the difference is one, you've got AX permission and one, you don't, right? So by right, you don't. You just look at the book and you check the boxes and you move forward. Now, red tape is going to slow it down, but it's not ultimately going to stop it. What do you make of 170 units on Strimbling Avenue behind Dirty Mellies on a road that is... Um Pretty damn tight, if you may. It's a little bit of tight, but but that's the point I'm trying to get at. There's a there's a, there's going to be an established process to go through that. Look, we we I didn't do any prep for today's show, so this is why I love today. You know, we're just winging it, right? Uh, we're not winging it; we're just having fun. But the numbers are. are are ridiculous. They're, the last seven days, 75 new homes. This is the whole car footprint went on the market. 131 went off. Two weeks ago, that was pretty much on par. So, look, anything to help housing affordability, anything to help this uh, housing ladder, right, is a good thing. Now, interim city manager, basically a hired gun, said, um, no. said in regards to the sidewalks, ain't happening. We are we should not pay for 
um, the sidewalks. Charlottesville yeah. City Hall should not pay for the sidewalks on Stribling. So I said I, that yesterday. Did yeah. you watch the meeting? I didn't watch the meeting, but I read it in it the Daily Progress. Dynamite meeting. Yeah, I'm a sure. lot covered. Well, it was interesting. I bumped into Juan Diego the other day, um, and and the meetings, the city meetings, are starting to run like they should be run. So that's exciting. That's ex from my perspective. Yeah, we know why that is. Yeah, we, we do. don't need to cover that on um, now. No, I um, just, just I wanted to give him kudos. What do you make of Stribling Avenue? Yeah. So you know, again. More Massive opposition to this project. Of course, yeah. Uh, m more housing is good all the way across the board. It helps these particular numbers and to do, to do all that stuff. Will it ultimately get approved? I haven't really tracked that, that project that closely. You're probably tracking it more closely than I can. My concern would be what was the buy right use on that? In other words, what is the, what's the number of homes that they can put on there without going through the asking process. And that seems, to, this is going to be the trend. So if, if we don't all come together, right, the people that oppose it and the people that are trying to do that and come together and try to figure out a way that, that is mutually beneficial for everybody, if, this, if, there, if we continue these clear lines, right, left and right, whatever it is, and I'm not talking politics, I'm just talking two different sides of the street, right on that end of it, What's going to happen is, is you're going to end up seeing probably more of the projects, you know, the, the buy right projects. I know you're seeing it in Fulvana County. I know you're seeing it in Greene County where the developers and the builders are just going to take the, the shortest path forward. They're doing it for two reasons, right? One is it's just why, why am I getting my head kicked in? The second reason is, you know, these numbers we're talking about, these 75 and 131, you know, two years from now, they're not going to look like that. And when I have a project that's going to take five years before I can put people in it, I, I need to start thinking about what that market's going to be like five years from now. And I can speak from that from a very personal perspective because I got caught in it. I got caught up in it, and I couldn't stop it at that particular point. So you're going to start seeing a lot of buy right. So I'd be really curious what the buy right configuration of that looks like. Of stribbling. Yeah. I don't, know what, I don't know what it is. Sean Tubbs, I just tagged you in the feed, and or Neil Williamson. They, you they, know prob they probably know. The buy right um, configuration of Stribling. I know that um, the neighborhood is certainly coming out in droves right now. Yeah. There was yeah. a letter to the editor in the Sunday, Saturday or Sunday edition of The Progress. I've just shared that comment or that letter to the editor in the comment section right now by Cable, by Cable Marshall. Um, and the concern is traffic on a narrow road and safety on a narrow road and what potentially 1,200 extra cars on that road will do. So um, how are we coming up with 1,200 extra cars? That's the estimated, um, the traffic, estimated count. traffic count. So, so somebody looked at a traffic yeah. impact analysis? Total to uh, the 170 units. Yeah, so... so Let's talk about that. It's in the news. I'm reading it. Right yeah, you know, now. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but the reality of that, that's, that's a pretty large. So they're saying 150, 175 units are going to produce 1,200 cars? 1,200 cars. Yeah. That, that. Trips. 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 Okay. Not trip. cars. Got trips. It. Got it. Got it. Got it. Trips. So, so the interesting part on that is, is, you know, the city is requiring two parking, at, at the moment anyway, two parking spots per unit. So I, I, was, I was doing some quick math that doesn't quite add up. And generally in that area, they're going to be one. So, so look, I'll ask the question a different way. If nothing happens there, what's going to happen, right? So I believe if nothing happens there, you're looking at 42 units. Got it. Instead of 170. Got it. That's a hell of a difference. Yeah, so, so let me ask you a question. Kevin Yancey of Waynesboro says, make sure you highlight the water concerns there. Neil Williamson is um, sharing yeah, a link to the- Yeah, they're running a new water line down there. Yep, yeah. Neil Williamson and Dee Dee Smith has highlighted that quite well on this network and yeah. in comments on Facebook. Neil Williamson um, has shared a link about rent control um, and said, should the government be setting rental rates on private projects? I said, hell no. No way, Jose, on that. Yeah, we can move off of that subject pretty quickly because you and I are on the same face. I grew up in rent control places. I know what that looks like. Yeah, that's bad news bears. Yeah, so the better answer to that is, is, is to bolster the rental assistant programs and stuff like that for the actual um, 
tenants. Actually, one of the great things that happened with the Planning District Commission when, when we were granted this money for rent, rental assistance, they actually, the state actually listened to us, and instead of going to the tenant, it went to the landlord, which was a huge change on that end of it, and it, it upped, the, upped the game big time. But I, I can't see where rent control is, is good. So, so he, here's, here's the, what's going to happen on this dribbling. If my, this is my prediction for what it's worth. Okay. If there isn't some sort of middle ground that we hit, it's just going to be, what would you say, 46? 42. 42. Um, probably single-family detached units, uh, my assumption is. I, I don't have the, the layout committed to memory on that end of it, or if it's even duplexes. So I can speak with some authority to this. Nassau Street, we just sold, resold Land Trust, just resold our first resale, 812 Nassau Street. It's closed. Uh oh, my mother's checking in on me. Um, <laughs> she, she watches the show. She, she, she said, <laughs> go, go ahead, finish your thought. She said, get it right, Smith, <laughs> son. <laughs> but but I, I can speak to some, some uh, uh, authority to, to this. Duplex. 1,500 square feet, so that's one half. 1,500 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths. Would you take a gander what the market value, the appraised market value, not what I think it is, not what you think it is, but what the appraisal thinks of that one half? Of, of re, run that by me again. So Nassau Street, yeah. it's a duplex. Yeah. 15, we built them, the Land Trust built them. 1,500 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths, a two-story two -story unit. All the bedrooms are on the second story. All the living areas are on the, on the first story. Uh, no garage. Happens to have solar on it, but that was granted, so we won't, that doesn't get rolled into the value. We, hadn't, we just sold it, and when, when we sell it, we have to do a, a fair market value appraisal. Do you, do you want to know what that... And it does not include the land. Does, no, no. So the fair market of value... Includes the land. Includes everything. So new construction, newish... No, no, no. It's two years old. Newish construction. Two years old. Um, with the land. This is... When, when, so when you do fair... I'd say fair market values be between three and 350? 400 grand. That's crazy. So, so That's my so point, crazy. So my point is... So there's going to be 42 homes in that area because this is the area that nobody to go back to the one in in Charlottesville that's on 29 North, uh, which would be a buy right project on that end of it. There will be 42 either duplex units or single family detached units. My suspicion is there'll be duplexes because of the property size on that end. Of it. They'll be trading at the 400 grand plus mark. If everybody's okay with that, then that's okay. Um, you know what's crazy is I think um, a lot of people in the community are completely fine with that. Okay. Then that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and then then you go back to the question of the phone calls I get about the the land trust homes. Greg and I, Greg Slater and I are listing when I get phone calls from cops, from firemen. Uh, nurses and teachers and go, I want to live close to Charlottesville and I have to let them know they make too much money to go ahead and, and qualify for our uh, housing affordability program, right? It's unfortunate. Right. So, so what's Certainly not where I, where I stand, um, but I think quite a few. In fact, I would say perhaps over half the majority of the community feels that way. And that's okay. You know, and, it's it's and their prerogative. It, that's what a democracy is all yeah. about, right? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> now, what's going to happen? What's, and and what, how what, I'm, what I'm basing so that let on? Let me back up for a second here, if you don't mind. Sure. So, so we we build 42. Let's just play this out. We build 42 duplex homes on there that are ranging between four and 450 in today's market, right? Somewhere in that range. Let's call it 400 for simple math on that end of it. What's going to happen to everybody's taxes? And what is, everybody, is going to happen to everybody's tax value? So we're complaining. Everybody's worried about their taxes going up. That, that's, that's going to increase your taxes more, and everybody might not agree with me on this, more than, what was it, 100? What was the, the number, original number, 100 and what? What's the original stribbling? What's the rezoning application for? Um, the uh, original stribbling is $1.70. 170. 42 um, is the... Uh likely scenario and is there any any affordable housing there's some there's, there's some affordable housing put into here in that? yeah, yeah got it. some 
Got it. Not a ton, but some. Yeah, and maybe that's the negotiations you have with the developer, and but screaming at each other or, or pointing fingers, right? What's our three rules here? No divisive politics, no pointing fingers, and, and Smith get it right. So, but, but uh, yeah, you know, from my perspective, you know, how I make a living, how I put food on the table. Oh, I know you're pro-housing. Right? Well, yeah. you know, if it's 170 or 40, you know, it's okay. It's not, the, in my opinion, it's not the right thing. We're not going to be able to get the people who serve us, you know, the, 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 the heroes out there, the nurses out there that are heroes, to live in our community. I, I, it breaks my heart when I have a conversation. I say, I can't help you. I, I don't have anything to help you with, unless you want to go to Buckingham. Yeah, and, I was having this conversation with uh, friends of the program um, over the weekend, um, movers and shakers in this community and and these folks who are you know developers and landlords are saying the likelihood of anything affordable being constructed in the city is 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 slim to none so this is a common statement among all, yeah, all of them got it so and they said why would we go through this process when we can just go buy right make it well, easy and, and, and sell the units um, at, a, at a margin where we know we're going to make money without the hassle. It's called the path of least resistance. Path, path of least resistance. It's the path of least resistance. And, and I, I've said this so many times on this program, affordable housing are buzzwords utilized to get elected in, into political office. That is why, um, and, and you mentioned it yesterday, and that is why three years ago, and we've got a, uh, I'm going to jump off of this uh, convention I'm going to tomorrow to take a, a meeting with the Regional Housing Partnership, but I've been trying for about three years to drop that term and replace it with housing affordability. And to me, that's a better term than affordable housing. Because I don't even think housing affordability exists in Charlottesville. No, but as a term... Roger West, we'll get to your comment. John that, Blair, hello on LinkedIn. We love you, John Blair. Friend so, of the program, John Blair. So as a term, it's a little easier to get your brain around than affordable housing because what's a what's affordable to you and me may be different to judah may be different to liza right i'll play devil's advocate for the sake of a talk show what does now the city manager yesterday did you did you follow up did you read the articles about yesterday's meeting very, very quickly did you hear what the city manager proposed the tax fill, rate should you, be i'll let you fill the details in on me two cents not ten cents well you know why he can do that right well, yeah, but I'm, do you want me to finish the details? Yes, sir. Okay. So he also said that uh, school reconfiguration should not happen. Okay. He said the tax rate should be two cent increase and not 10. Okay. Also said we should consider a property tax rate um, reduction. This is literally the hired gun city manager. Um, I'll ask this question to everyone that's watching the show. Assessments have spiked on average 12% across the city of Charlottesville. 20% Orangedale community, 20% plus, 20% 10th and Page plus. What happens when... We're over 30% on Nassau Street. What happens when the city of Charlottesville has assessment spike? What happens, what does the city of Charlottesville get? When the assessment hike comes, yeah. spike comes? What do they get? It gets more revenue. Depending gets more on, revenue. Depending on the tax rate now. Gets, gets more revenue. Sure. With assessments going up. What okay. happens when um, tax rates go up? What does the city of Charlottesville get? More cash. What happens when property taxes go up? What, what does the city of Charlottesville get? More cash. City of Charlottesville. Am I, am I doing good so far? <laughs> if they continue on the road of making the community expensive, do they not just get more cash? They get more cash, but it also depends on the other side of the ledger sheet, right? So you got, you're got you a business guy, right? Yeah. So you got your expenses and you got your income, right? So, so as far as tax rate goes and all that stuff, that's just an income side of, of the ledger board. It drives it's, revenue. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an income side. Of, it's a p and It's a profit and loss. You got so your does income. the city of Charlottesville actually want to make the city more affordable? Or does the city of Charlottesville want to give the perception of making the yeah. city more affordable? Yeah. You know me well enough to know I'm not going to point any fingers at, at people at the city and all that stuff because I think folks out there really are doing the best that they do can. Do you? I really do. I really do. I do not think anybody over there has some nefarious... I don't think it's nefarious. I think it's needing to fund, needing to finance and fund 
a lot of things. Oh, oh, oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Then now that that's two very different comments, right? I mean, so, so the approach that you took in the beginning that I heard anyway with my right dead ear and hearing aid, by the way. Yeah. So, so be a little patient with me. Um, is is that there was some plan? There was some nefarious plan out there. What you're describing? I never just said nefarious. No, no I, I know that. Yeah. I interpreted it that way. So. Um, I think the city of Charlottesville is completely okay. You're gonna let me finish with assessments and tax rates and personal properties going up, because so, they have a number of endeavors they need to fund that they cannot currently do. Yeah, so that's just a business model, right? So that's why I think affordable, even housing affordability, is yeah. unrealistic. I don't disagree with that um, to a certain extent, but. The comment that I was trying to finish was that <clears throat> what I've learned in 35 years of working with local politics, and I'm sure Neil will 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 attest to this. Um, everybody everybody wants this little pet projects. Everybody wants this this whatever it is, and it starts slamming into this into this budget, right? Everybody, this group wants this. The land trust is trying to get the city to give more money, right? Uh, uh, Judah uh, wants to raise more money to take care of Liza, right? I want that in the budget. That's why when you, when you had the conversation, we had the conversation with Ned, and this is why I watched this very closely, as I watched the budget. The, the budget season is the season to watch. Oh, no doubt. Uh, because th that's when you're going to know where everybody's priority is. But if you remember some shows ago, we talked about this 10 cents, and that's just the cap. They have to ma advertise a cap. They can go down, but they can't go above above that number and at this point is 10 cents so the the part of the component and we were i was trying to get actually ned galloway in on friday but uh, to join us but he's in the middle of budget work it's session work sessions right now that's what we really need to start watching where they land on the budget because that's going to tell you what the tax the the cent Increase is going to be, by, by the way, in Altamore County, in Flavana County, in City of Charlottesville, in Louisa, in Nelson, in Green. You need to start watching that because that's, that, tri that portion of that triangle is going to tie every, everything together. I watched the meeting closely yesterday. Good. Start to finish, very closely. And I think reading the tea leaves, the five counselors have cooled on a 10 cent tax rate increase. I'm sure of that. Yeah. That tax rate increase is gonna be much smaller, thank God. City councilors have cooled on school reconfiguration as it's proposed currently, and it's 75, $100 million form. That's not gonna happen. And the Commissioner of Revenue, Todd Divers, is really getting in the ear, ear of council of Which, lowering the Which, by the way, is an elected position. Elected position. Most people don't know that. That is an elected position. I mean, let's cut to the chase. Todd, Todd Drivers is the commissioner of revenue. An elected position. What's going to happen when Which we has, get these... Which the city council has no control over. What's going to happen when we get these personal property tax bills? Well, that's and, the real... That's the and real. And people are going to say, what the heck is going on here, commissioner of revenue? And he knows he has to get reelected. That's exactly right. So, so think about that. So what is the guy doing right now? He's telling everybody on the record, papering the trail, that I was the one that made the push of lowering the push. property tax rate. Because he needs to utilize that leverage come re-election time. But Jerry, this has been going on for 35 years. As long sure, as everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. right. Yeah. This is, you know what I heard in that whole comment that you made? What's that? The system is working. Right? Is the system working? Well, they sent out something. They said, this is what we're thinking. There was a tremendous amount of feedback. It's They're certainly working <laughs> if you're a homeowner who makes some money. The system no, 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 is no, working for talking, you. I'm talking process, Jerry. Right, process. So, so it happened. It went out there. There was feedback. That was the purpose that they have to advertise this rate. Right? You've tackled it. We've tackled it. Neil's tackled it. Sean's tackled it. The Daily Progress has tackled it. And they're now getting, they, meaning the elected officials, are now getting feedback. The elected officials, to include the treasurer. Commissioner of Revenue. The, no, no, the treasurer is also an elected position. Absolutely. The, the commissioner of revenue, right? The city council members, the hired gun, a.k.a. city manager, is hearing it. And, and it's, and thankful to this conversation we're having, it's starting to get adjusted a little bit. If you remember some time ago, I said, let's wait and see what happens with the budget and everything. So 
more than likely, you're going to be somewhere between 2 and 10, is what my suspicion is going to be. But all of that's going to depend on how many people, what that budget's going to be. Heather Lamont Walker, hello, and welcome to the program. Un Retired unlike, teacher. unlike Nelson County, which, which Jesse, Jesse Rutherford made a commitment on this show, on Real Talk, that they're going to do revenue neutral. And at the moment, the little bit I've been tracking on that, they're on track to do that. Oh, yeah. I have no doubt that's going to happen. They're on track to do that. Vanessa Parkhill, Queen of Earliesville. Hello, and welcome to the program. Neil Williamson, Roger West, and Jason Howard. We're going to get to these comments here in a matter of moments um, on the show. I think if, if, if you know, I we all follow this closely. I am a junkie for news, Thank local you know. news a junkie for local news. I watch the council meetings, and at times they are like watching paint dry. That painful, but I watch them. And, and t kudos, I'm gonna stop you here for a second. Kudos to you, kudos for doing that. Unfortunately, that's the reason why a lot of people don't watch it. I, 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 dude, if you put the council meetings on a network like this, I can assure you they're gonna be much more engaged than sure. where they have it currently. Um, what I saw last night was five people pretty much indicate that they're not going to do the reconfiguration. Five people pretty much indicate that the tax rate is going to go up a couple of pennies instead of 10. Five people very trepid about a sidewalk project on Stribling Avenue that's paramount to this new development behind Jefferson, behind Dirty Nellie's, behind Wayside Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. I saw five people extremely concerned that their legacy is going to be associated with massive gentrification in this community. I saw a hired gun city manager, a consultant, frankly, playing an extremely conservative with city finances, and I applaud him for doing that. I applaud the city manager. It's interesting. It's a very interesting concept because very few jurisdictions have ever done this before that I'm aware of anyway. I'm sure there's quite a few of them. Because the beauty thing about having this, this, this contract employee, because that's what he is. Yeah, he's a consultant. But he's a contract employee. No. He's not an actual employee. And that puts him in a very, or that person, in a very different position than a regular employee. No doubt. Which is interesting, and, and I applaud you for watching it. I, I just the consultant is I was able. Working. The I, consultant I, is able to make decisions that are not associated with pulse or popularity. No, no, no. They're no. able to make decisions that are from a macro standpoint, it's, not it's, followed by emotion. It's even better than that. He doesn't let our politics get in the way. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. allow politics to get Pulse in the way. Pulse or popularity. So, so I, will, I, will, I will tell you, the decision to do that, in my opinion, was a stroke of genius on the city council's end. Of it wasn't a stroke of genius. Well, it was, they, they, had no they had no choice. They had, I was trying to take the high road. The guy who they hired to take this position. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Turned down the position yeah. before he took the job. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I was it was desperation. I was trying to take the high road. The next, the next question we should all be asking on this show is but, this but, one. But, it, but it's working because um, th th he's not afraid to open up his mouth. That's he, what I'm saying. He's not afraid to get fired. He doesn't care about it, popularity and, and, or pulse. And I would imagine, I don't know, maybe Neil or Sean will look in the actual contract that they've hired, you know, the, the employment, the the. the the consulting contract that they hired, but I bet you if they terminate them, they still get a ton of money, and or terminate the, the contract prior to the termination. They're not going to do that. No, of course not. No. Yeah, they have zero chance I, of doing that. You know, luck, desperation, genius. The fact that that's there, and the fact that you're reporting to me and to everybody how that meeting went tells me it's working. Because he's like going, no, no, no. This is what we're going to do. So that's to me, that's a great sign. I. I I mean, it's a, it's, it's something. I don't, I don't know if it's a great well, sign you gotta keep that you have a higher mercenary that are essentially being the city manager. The next question well, that everyone... is a strong word. I mean, that's but, what he is. But, he uh, he travels a, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, commanding hundreds of thousand dollars of pay to be a jurisdictional leader in an interim status. So I prefer the term fixer. He's a fixer. He's going to come in and fix it. And as long as they allow him to fix it, it's the same conversation I said with our dear friend Chip Boyles, right? As long as you let Chip do his job, which ultimately didn't happen. Yeah, they didn't let Chip do his job. Absolutely didn't let the him do The next question we should all be asking, if we're following this as closely as we all do, is the longer we wait in 2022, and we are now at the end of the first quarter of 2022. Awfully close to it. 
Okay, we have nine day, less than nine days left. We're getting closer and closer and closer to November 2023 elections. Correct. Yeah. November 2023 elections are now less than 20 months away. So that's why this date that Neil Williamson and I have picked is so important because because if they don't have this worked out, meaning the, the new ordinances, the city, by June? No. The next question we need to ask is, the, the closer we get to next year's election, will we have to wait from a political pressure standpoint of hiring the next city manager to the next, the next council is elected? So Payne, Snook, and McGill are up for re-election. Cena McGill is not going to run again. She looks exasperated, exhausted. Well, and we, we don't know that for a fact, this. but but you, the body language is yeah. there. Uh, mm. The body language is there. Lloyd Snook is no spring chicken. Michael Payne, I think, is one of the most frustrated people on council here because his entire campaign associated with affordable housing has literally not really materialized or come to fruition. I've had a couple sit downs with 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 Michael. Uh, it, 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 you're right; he's he's definitely frustrated. So you got three of five spots on council that are coming up for re-election in November 2023. Are they going to hire a new city manager before well, that election? That. And if so, is that person going to be a lame duck city manager? So, Jerry, we're saying the same thing, right? We're saying the same thing. I just happened to wrap it around the rezoning rewrite. You're oh, wrapping. the rezoning rewrite is going to happen. You're wrapping. Well, you're, yeah. You're city wrapping. manager may not. You're, and maybe it doesn't have to. Maybe it's working, right? Maybe it's maybe the maybe the consultant is what is what they need for a projected projected period of time you know if it ain't broke don't fix it right so if it's working and it's moving us in the right direction maybe this might be the new norm who knows we don't know that yet but the point i'm trying to make is the reason why i picked that june date from my bet with my mustache is because if this doesn't get all this this that you're talking about right this i know this from decades of doing this if the silly season starts which is going to be june because june they're going to have to by june i don't know the year the date in in June of of 2023, but there's there is you have to announce by a certain date somewhere in the beginning of June, if I remember it correctly, on that end of it. So once there's announcements made, everything gets a little wonky because you're 100% right. So if there's a contested election, now the three that are up, that's this many. I don't I don't think Snook's not going to run again. I don't it, think McGill's going to run again. It, Payne may run again. The point I'm trying to make, it doesn't matter. The, the, it, okay, so the point I was trying to get to, so assuming there's three seats that are going to run and there's at least one, one uh, contested per, per thing, it, the dynamics become very different, right? Now, if all three don't run, and this is why elections matter, this is why people putting their hat in the ring matters, so if it goes the track that you're going, all three don't do that, and there's three new that comes on there, that's even that's kind of makes it even worse because the three that are going to do it. I think all three. If I was a betting man and I am a betting man, I would, would not be surprised if all three McGill, Payne, and Snook are completely off council in the first of January, 2024, and that decision will be determined in November of 2023, if not sooner, in a Democratic <laughs> primary. So or looking at body language and all that stuff, that's a pretty sure. Thing, no I doubt. think, at this point. Yeah. But what we don't know what's going to happen in the next year and a half. Right? So the question you've got to ask is it's like in sports. Would you hire, if you're a college uh, head football coach, when the athletic director position is not filled? No. You wouldn't hire a head football coach when the athletic director position is not filled. City council is the athletic directors. Why would the city council hire a city manager? when three spots on council could be potentially up for grabs again. It's the same scenario as the athletic director and the head football coach. Well, that, so again, maybe the city council isn't at that rotation, but in the state of Virginia, there's elections every year. There's constantly turnover on boards, on board of supervisors, I got that run right, on city councils. So. You know, the cycle has is always there. This is the norm of being. There's always somebody up for election. There's always so they're not going to stop a process. If, if I heard you correctly, um, stop a process because there may be new. Is that is that the point you were trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is the closer we get to the election oh, yeah, next we're saying year, the, same thing. the likelihood of hiring a city manager becomes less and less and less. So I tell people all the time that 
that if they want, if you wanted to hire me to consult to do something, not general real estate over that, there's two to get a subdivision approved, get something approved. There's two times of a elected body's life you do not want to be submitting a new project. First one is where we're in right now, which is the budget season. You don't want to do that because you don't, you know, they they'll be focusing on budget. It'll, it'll, they just can't only focus on a couple of things at the same time. And the other thing is, is in, in this little election period that you just described, right? So when, when, when all of a sudden now there's new seats up and you're 100% you're right, some city council, some board of supervisors might walk back and say, well, I'm not making a decision because A, I'm not gonna be here to live with it, right? I'm not gonna give that, I'm not gonna make this decision for Jerry who's coming in or somebody else. But there's usually two little windows so that that exist. Did that make any sense? Kind of. Kind of. Okay, yeah. Got it. I mean, I think we can I think we can say so that um I think we can say that uh the council is distracted by the budget now, right? So that's not exclusive to the to the oh, city of course. council. That's every government. All yeah. so that's the point I'm trying to make. So during budget season, which is starting early and earlier these days, right? It used to really not start until after the first of the year. Now it's really starting in November and December when the, when the department starts saying, hey, this is the amount of money I want and all this great stuff. And it lasts till about April, right? That's usually the, the budget budget season. So it's hard. Like Ned's a prime example. I, you know, Ned wants to come on the show and talk. But look, I'm in the middle of budget season. I don't have the, the bandwidth to go ahead and do that. The second thing is election season. Right, and that starts around, assuming who's up for election, that starts around June, July, till November. Does that make sense? Did I do a better job? No, I didn't do a better I, job. I, I, th I think what we are, um, we're seeing here is we're seeing five folks that have been distracted by a budget and not focused on hiring a city manager. And until the budget is established or maybe or they, set, Or maybe they just said, okay, I've hired Judah, right? Or I hired Jerry, I'm good. Now I can focus on this other stuff. And then let me focus on this other stuff and then we'll vi revisit. Because we know it's gonna take months to interview a city manager. Yeah. And we already have a paper trail of city managers coming and taking jobs and quitting the position before they come on, on market, before they come to the job. And that's the guy from, was it Mark Woolley from Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. He quit days before the job was ready to start. You know, there was a little controversy floating around in the background on that one too. And then he bashed the city in Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah. So my prediction for what it's worth, maybe we should take out the crystal balls here, but my, my prediction for what it's worth, um, as long as this is working, this contract employee is working, this consultant is working, um, I don't see that changing, and I think this is the point you're trying to make. I don't think I see this changing until the new council sit on 2024. I mean, the, you know there is a time stamp on there, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean they can't extend the contract. But but there is a there is a time stamp yeah. on the contract. Yeah, but they can. That's okay. Yeah. And you know that they're spending considerably more on this hired gun than what a city manager position normally would entail. Yeah, but but you're you are now a city councilor, right? You're a business. It's a six council. month contract. They're okay. putting in, they're putting this in the feed. The contract is up June 18th. I got it, but that doesn't mean I, I well I have I don't have the contract committed to memory, right? But I suspect that there are some extensions built into that, right? Most contracts do, on that end of it, right? Uh, but yeah, that, so are you saying what was the date? June. Uh, June 18th. Yeah, this June 18th of this this year. Yeah. yeah this, this, I mean, Keith, that is April, May. <laughs> We're, that is 70 day, 75 days This from is now. not even a bet. They're going to extend it. They're going to have to extend that, it. And right? if they extend it, uh -huh. it's going to take it till the end of the year. So if it's taken till the or, end of the year. Or the consultant's going to go, I want a one-year contract. I want a two-year contract. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, My okay. whole point is the closer we get to the election, the likelihood of this council hiring a city manager becomes less and less because it will be a lame duck city manager. So other than the cost, why do they need to hire one? Put the cost aside. Why do they need to hire one? Well, well, generally, you want the CEO of your city to live in the city and be from the city. Absol absolutely, it's a requirement, actually. Yeah, and 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 not to be somebody. Which is that's an interesting thing. Paid exorbitant fees and not living in the city. I'm curious how they circumvented that 
on this end of it. And there may be, there may be, and, and Neil or Sean will, or whoever in the feed can, can surely dig this up, there may be some statute that states they only can do it for a certain period of time. So we just had this whole conversation about extending it in six months. There may be some statute that they have to, you know, have to live in, or it may be a uh, policy, right? So if it's a policy, then the city can just, the, the city council can change it. But look, assuming it's allowed to happen, assume it's going to do all this stuff, why would they, why, it's going to get extended. I mean, I can't see why it wouldn't. The only reason it wouldn't get extended is, is if they want to hire a city manager before this council is over, before this well, we council know term for is a, done. We know for a fact at this point it's going to have to get extended because they're not advertising for any. I mean, they're not really, at least I'm aware of, you might be aware of it. I don't think they're out there looking for somebody. I mean, I don't think, I, I would hope to God that information would be out there. It's, I don't know well, it's, it's out there. It's supposed to be public. Yeah. Right. I think right now they're so focused on the budget and the fact yeah. that the budget's yeah, yeah, in utter yeah, yeah, shambles. Yeah. I think we're saying the same thing. Um, kind of. Um, I, I, you know, we'll see what happens. Regardless, you have um, a municipality when they raise the rates like they're doing and raise the taxes like they're doing, they're not making it more affordable. And that's why my, my initial point with all this was maybe the city doesn't want the affordability to happen. Maybe they're fine with just getting an expensive community and just driving revenue on wealthy people. So I can, I'm pretty sure nobody's actually thinking that, saying this is what we want to do. It's the result. It's the result of their inability to perform, right? That's the result. The result of of that of that process on that on that end of it. But you know, it's interesting. I saw one of your feeds the other day um, about the tax relief, uh, real estate relief thing, and and I actually did a little homework on that because I dug up the state ordinances mm -hmm. on it because I wanted to see what the jurisdictions can do and the jurisdictions can't do. And it's pretty broad, right? Because you know we're a um, Dillon rule state, so I want to. Anytime I look at something like this, I start looking at at the, the the muni code for the state, right? You know what they can do and they can't do. So the the current program that they have right now, there's there's a disability and age. So you got to be 65 and a certain amount of money. As That's you, right. As you well know. Yeah. They also have another program that caps the. I believe it's 375. 375,000. 75,000. Michael Payne has outlined this well. And it also caps the income at 55,000 dollars, right? That's right. So there's no rule that I could find anyway that says, okay, you know what? We're going to make the income. I'm picking numbers. But you realize, you realize this, though. This is extremely important language. I'm reading it verbatim. Okay. If you own or are living in your home in the city of Charlottesville and you are 65 years of age or older or permanently disabled mm -hmm. and have a yearly income of 55000 or less, mm -hmm. 55000 or less is obviously extremely doable for... Um, elderly that are retired, right? It, but doubt. They're retired. Got it. Probably won't have any income. The key caveat here is, and a net worth of 125000 or less. How does that work? If I got a house that's three hundred, dollars That's what I'm <laughs> telling people. <laughs> if I got a... You got well, a home that's assessed over three hundred seventy-five, dollars yeah. and you're elderly and retired, the likelihood is you have more than $125,000 of equity in your home. Assuming they include their property as part of the net worth. So that, yes, yeah. that's part of the net worth. Well, no, no. They get to choose their own formula, Jerry. What you and I consider net worth, what you net and I worth, in, ex, okay, I stand corrected. Net worth excludes the fair market value of the home you that's live what, in. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. excludes it, so yeah. that does not factor yeah. it in. So, so net worth is not your home value. Yeah. I stand corrected. Yeah. So that's, I, I'm I'm going from memory, which you know my memory's yeah. not the world's best since you know you know, a certain age that happens. You would think a lot of retired people being retired. So, so here's the problem with this, Jerry. There's two problems with that. Let's assume they don't change that, right? So, by the way, that's verbatim out of the code. Yeah, so they, you're right. There's verbatim out of the state code. This isn't something that they have amended or they changed on all this stuff. Here's the other problem you have with that. What's the timeline that you have to report this, to, to qualify, to, to say, I want this? It's one month. It's literally one month that you have to do that. I don't know what's the second problem is, other than what we're doing right now and your network and real talk that, that we've created and all this stuff, nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about this. I'm talking about it constantly on the I Love Seville show. I, I, I know that. 
but nobody's talking about it, but it's gone now. The timeline is over. It's February 1 to March 1. I believe that, if I got that right, I believe you have to notify the city, and I may be mixing the county up because they have different dates on that, but it's, it's, it's a one month window. So if Judah qualifies for that, and Judah doesn't know about this program, right, and doesn't, and, and all of a sudden hears of us talking about it here on the, the 22nd of March, on that, on that end of it, he's SOL for 12 months. Period. So change that, folks. That's a simple change, right? Say so you can apply for it at any time. You can apply for it at any time. Why wouldn't they do that? You know, the Twitter feed I was having on this project in Charlottesville is, you know, bureaucrats, bureaucracy, red tape, green tape, they tend to have lives of their own on that end of it. And maybe, maybe there needs to be one person hired to do this. Maybe this, this hired gun who's listening to the show might say, okay, you know, let's do this. I've found of doing this for a long time that unless somebody says something to them, they just kind of move along the way it's been going, right? So, you know, Make a phone call, Jerry. I'll make a phone call. Say, okay, Mr. Payne, you want to help? Here's a simple fix. Now, it also may be a state ordinance. They're only allowed to do this for a month. I don't know, I know enough about that. What they should do is raise that threshold from 375000 But they have a second program. You know that, right? Yeah, I do know it. They have a second program. And that second program is not age-related. How many homes do you think in the city of Charlottesville are assessed below 375000 Well, that's a... That's a a question for another show because we can actually do that. Yeah, we can look at the GIS. No, I can do that on my on my program. That would I you have say in. of the homes, it's less than ten percent? Well, I can tell you now it is. Yeah, I after can, the last assessment, I can tell you two years two years ago it was very different. It was very different, right? Yeah. Because now would you say it's less than ten percent? So that same house that we talked about on Nassau Street two years ago was ta was a market value, not tax value. Market value was three hundred grand. So it raised $100,000 in 12 months. Neil, uh, Kevin's saying you have to reapply for tax relief? That's a great question. I, I think you have to reapply every year. I believe so. But the window's shut down. That's right. the problem. I, it's passed. The window's closed. The window He's is, definitely right about that. The window is shut down. I'm pretty sure yeah, most of these things like land, um, you know, uh, what they call land use taxes out in some of the counties, like if you've got a farm or, or something like that, you have the to... The reason they do have the window, for those that are one, wondering, um, and it ended March 1, is, 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 yeah. is because of the labor-intensive nature of this application process. Yeah, so hire somebody. And Hire somebody? <laughs> they don't have a fucking... They don't have a city manager. <laughs> oh, did you... Um... <laughs> I, they don't have a city manager. Yeah, 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 I know, How's, I know. They don't uh, even have a CEO. Yeah, I know that. That was an easy thing to say. Yeah. But hire but. somebody. <laughs> they have twenty. Hire somebody. Bye bye. Twenty four percent of the police department is yeah, vacant. Yeah, yeah. So you're hundred percent right. How, right. how are they gonna? So so you now just added the the other thing, right? This is the way it's working. Plus they don't have the resources, the human resources, to go ahead and, to go ahead and do it. Yeah. Right. Look, I mean, this is this is. It's uh, in shambles. Yeah, well, shambles is a strong word, but but uh, it's but it's you know the hiring of people is the same problem. I've got you know a, a, some other projects that I'm aware of that are in their surrounding jurisdictions that are six to eight months behind schedule because they don't have enough people to review them. That's what I'm approve. saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that but that's a that's a that's a. A problem everybody's dealing with right now. That's everybody from the building w permits. W William Ritchie, right? Uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, folks that are in the restaurant business. You know, everybody's uh, struggling with the that. Bebedero ABC license. You know, I, we got clients that are in the remodeling space getting building permits right now. Months, dude. Months. Yeah. You know? The, and, and wait till he tries to get a CO. Wait, and, 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 and the building permit window of meeting with somebody, it's like... 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. like three hours, two days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, because they're they're understaffed. So so th this is a this is a chicken and egg kind of thing, right? So how how are you going to hire more people? Well, first of all, there's nobody to hire. Right? That's the first problem, which you can't fix. But even if there is somebody in the secondly, pool, you don't have the CEO in place to hire people. Thirdly. You don't have the capital. Yeah, you don't have the revenue to hire people. Right, and 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 the the only good or bad thing about um, local governments think they're typically only one year contracts, right? So there's not a, a long standard, you know, unless you negotiate something at a city council, you know, at a, a, a county administrator or city administrator. Vanessa Parko, it's not about what the councilors want; it's about what's practical. Government sure. programs cost money. The government doesn't yep. produce anything. Its only source of money is taxation, Taxes, yeah. which means it's reaching into someone's pocket, a business, a resident, or a visitor. The more we depend on the government for services, including relief for lower fixed, fixed income residents, the more they're going to tax us. So <clears throat> that brings it back to the land trust, right? That we, we now have sold our 10th home. Uh, this morning, actually, over there at, at uh, Spring Hill. We are producing homes that are in the 60, excuse me, the 50 to 60 percent AMI for $20,000 a unit. We went out and raised that money. That, that wasn't government money. You, you sat in this chair, this chair here, for 12 hours and, and helped us raise a substantial amount of money to go ahead and do this. So it doesn't take a lot of money to do this. It takes relationships to do it. And that's the reason why we've been so successful because we have the private sector, the public sector, the nonprofit sector. We have lenders involved in it to go ahead and do this. If you're reliant upon the government to do it, it's never going to happen. Yeah, and she says, I favor programs that attract businesses and industry to Charlottesville with more jobs that will drive the B poll tax. I, I, Vanessa, you and I have identical ideologies in so many things. That was interesting. I was had a, I, I can't talk about it, but it was a commercial client of mine that that was looking to do something in the Zion's Crossroads area. It didn't matter which side of the line. Um, and, and he's moving someplace else purely because of a lack of housing affordability. They can't, they, you know, where are the where are the people going to live? They want them to live a certain distance away. This was a substantial, a substantial potential uh, employee base, right? About 100, 150, depending on the, the operation they were going to set up. And they've just moved down the road. They're going to move down the road to some place they don't know yet. I think it's actually a different state that they're going to move to. But that's that's kind of where that 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 is. It's the same thing. The nurses, right? They're trying to hire nurses, and the first question a nurse says, "Okay, where where am I going to live?" Hence, back to the 170 on stribbling, right? You know, you know, if they turn out to be four hundred and four hundred fifty thousand dollar unit homes, who's that buyer profile, right? Who is that buyer profile? Is that buyer profile the the, the forty or fifty, the sixty or the seventy thousand dollar? No, eighty thousand dollar. It's not. No, it's not. Particularly with interest rates going up, climbing up. So that forty that and four personal property taxes and assessments and a potential tax rate increase and inflation and gasoline and groceries. We we are. Did you see the sixty minutes on Sunday? I did not. The sixty minutes on Sunday. Anybody that's watching this program, we got a lot watching. I encourage you to Google sixty minutes, um, March twentieth, twenty twenty two. Just Google that sixty what was, minutes, what was March twentieth, housing, and they they legitimately highlighted um, renters yeah. that saw their rents go up thirty percent plus year over year. And they highlighted, now granted, this isn't impacting Charlottesville here, how major corporations are scooping up housing stock. So if we, correct, yeah. yeah and then they also highlighted how building now, it, because rent is, rents are so high, that- uh, they're, they're building for rental units. Building for rent, as, as opposed to building for purchase. Sure, sure, yeah. So they're, they're, it depends if that's how their business model is structured, but, but- Basically saying that millennials and younger now are no longer likely to be homeowners anytime soon uh, i don't maybe the, the me being a bit pollyannic about it i don't necessarily agree with that statement what it's going to be is more expensive right and and the and the buyer profile right that's the term du jour in our industry is the buyer profile is going to start shifting and again it's going to start shifting to if this these units are four four fifty or five hundred thousand or whatever the number is going to be 
just do the, you know, it's a great question for Scott tomorrow to ask them, you know, for a $450,000 house, right? What, what, What's my, you know, with the with the traditional down payment, you know, what is my monthly payment going to be in, t in today's uh, mortgage rate environment? Knowing that it's going up, by the way, on that on that en on that end of it, and then work your way backwards. Who is that? Who is that going to fit? And I'll bet you it's mostly these tech folks that are coming in, right? Mostly these six figure jobs that are coming in. That I may be wrong. Uh, but, no, but, I think you're 100 percent right. And but, guys, we have, we do we have not even seen, and and I am extremely grateful for the School of Data Science opening because I think it's going to have um, a huge impact positively mm -hmm. on the economy. But I'm telling you, when this school opens, it's going to very much change the housing landscape in this so, community. So you know, over the three some odd, we're in our beginning of our fourth year of doing this together. You're becoming very much so a real estate expert, right? On on this end of it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a question you ask me all the time. So where where are they going to go? What what in your opinion is so so that there's going to have to be city oh, of Charlottesville well, is let, going let, to be wealthy people. That's not the question. And the outer counties are going to be the folks that serve the city of Charlottesville. Got it. That was what I was trying to get yeah. to. Right. So where is the cop? Where is the fireman? Where is the the teacher? Where is that going to be? But that's not even happening in the outer, outer counties, Jerry. Well, it's, it's happening in Buckingham. It's happening in Waynesboro. It's happening in Stanton. It's happening in Augusta County. It's happening in Green. Uh, uh, green, green, green. They parts of Green are still in the twos yeah. and early threes. Yeah, but I'm talking about approval of, of more units, not what the current market is right now on growing. Scottsville. The Bird Streets right now. There's yeah. development there. It's happening. Got it. Got it. So it does exist. So two years ago, this convers. Well, I'm talking more about what's what projects what, more, increasing more density, right? Yeah. Because we need that more density. Otherwise, it's just because what's happening out in just just Fulvana County, which is my home, my home county, right? You know, the, these three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. I was looking at new construction. It's not happening there. It's not because yeah. It, well, Supervisor Fairchild does not want it to happen, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. And my point is, so where's it going next, right? So Buckingham, well, Buckingham, uh, Scottsville, Scottsville, Augusta, Waynesboro. Okay. It's all happening there. But what? But is Augusta and Waynesboro? So the folks that are watching it right now, I looked at numbers there. They're in the threes now. Right. Right. Yeah. So they're going to start climbing, and that that wall is just going to, or that rubber band is just going to start growing and growing and growing. Yeah. And oh, by the way, with four dollars to five dollars a gallon of gasoline, which I actually ran some numbers about that new e, um, Chevy, um, the Bolt. No, the Silverado that's coming out. Uh huh. My wheel truck. Okay, you know, you know, you know what the starting price on that is? Tell me, one hundred and five. Well, I, I actually looked at the Ford um, ran numbers on the Ford. It was the, it, lightning. the Lightning. You yeah, can so, get a work truck at forty. So I can get, I can get a, um, I can get a work truck Silverado around the same price. Yeah, forty and change. So they're only Silverado at the moment is only offering two options. The work truck for yeah. forty, and then the RST or whatever they're calling it, the which deluxe is, one, which, which is, is one hundred and five. Yeah, Lightning is ninety. The deluxe, the one. high end of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was actually doing, thinking about our show that we did this, and am I okay with this? Oh yeah, yeah. I was doing some math on that. So my Tacoma has seventy five thousand miles on it. It's five years old, right? Uh, on that end of it, it's a good-looking truck. Thank you very much. It's the it's, that'll run for a long time. Yeah, well, that's the point I'm trying to make. It's yeah. it's the limited. It's the it's the top of the line Tacoma, right? Which would be equal to the to the Chevy uh, RST Silverado. Maybe the Silverado's a little bit bigger on the end of it, but it tow it. My truck tows eight thousand pounds. The Silverado tow eight thousand pounds. My point is, I bought that brand new five years ago for forty grand, right? Top of you can buy one right now, probably somewhere around that price point and all that stuff. So I did some math on how much gas. So at two bucks a gallon versus four bucks a gallon, if I went out and bought a new truck for a hundred grand or ninety grand, you know, how many years would it take me to make up the difference? Kind of like a mortgage thing. Forever. It's like forever. It's forever. It's forever. Yeah. So the new plan is. That's why, like when 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 uh, we'll just say politicians want to say, you want to combat inflation? Buy an electric vehicle. 
You wanna, you wanna, you wanna do something great for the environment? Buy an electric vehicle. Guess what? It sounds great on paper. Oh no! Then you have to buy it. Yeah. So we're blessed. Yona and I are super blessed, right? Right. We, we, everybody who knows our story, we, we were, we lost everything we had. We busted our ass. We're, we're doing great, right? We're doing great right now. So my truck's paid off. That's what I'm saying. I'm just going to leave my truck and I'm going to go buy a Bolt for 30 grand. And that's what I'm going to use to run around town and keep my truck for when I need my truck until Mrs. Smith tells me it's time to move and then I'll sell my truck. The, uh, the but I need my truck because on Sunday, we were looking at property uh, for a client up in Western Albemarle. I, was, I needed my truck to go and walk property. We walked a bunch of lots and all that stuff. And, and you need the four-wheel drive. I needed four-wheel drive. I needed, I needed my truck to go ahead and put four adults in the vehicle and drive up the side of a mountain to look at the top of a mountaintop. I need that periodically. I don't need it every day. Do they buy the land? Are they going to buy it? Oh, yeah. We're going to write a contract on yeah. it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Very you. nice. Well, we've got to get it accepted. That's, that's the tricky part. Is it a multiple offer scenario? No. No, no. This is... A little less competition on the dirt, right? Yes and no. Maybe yes, maybe no yes. Maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on where it is. This particular parcel... Um, so it's, it's deep in Albemarle. It's deep in Albemarle. It has a, um, uh, a ton of expenses for driveway. It, it's it, it's going to take a lot of work to get to the home site and do all that stuff. But So land contracts, most people don't know, have a study period built into them. So that's what we're going to do is do a study period. Um, this is from Stephen. Um, and we'll close on this. He's exactly right. The government... and. Re referencing what I was saying, the government is looking to keep this expensive because the revenue associated with expensive keeps the government locally able to afford new things and projects. Well, I'll be a Pollyannic about it. I think that they are honestly are trying to do the right thing. It's just they don't have the tools or, the, or they just don't see things. I, I see this all the time, particularly with these um, housing meetings I'm in, when you throw something at them uh, well, how about this idea? You can see the the deer in a headlight looks like they've never thought of it. Because they've because they've never had a, had to. They're not business. They, you know? They've never. It's just not, not what business they, people. It's just not what they do, right? I mean, you got you got and and I all all the counselors I, are great. I will tell you every single meeting I've ever met with um, with a, with the exception of a few like Ned, who's a business guy. Almost every one of them ask me. So how did you go from losing seventeen million dollars? from losing every, we went from, we lost all our, we lost everything except what was important, which was our family, my wife and my kids and my home. To rebuilding. To doing what you're doing. They, yeah. they don't understand. And, and, and I take the time and I explain it to them. And the light bulb kind of goes on a little bit on that end of it. But, but they, they don't, you know, to them, it's like, well, I would have, I would have just put my head in the dirt I would have no you know. I mean I, a perfect example of this and, and he's my friend I see him a few times a week Mayor Snook oh yeah his office is right there like literally right yeah, there yeah. sure it, how many steps is it from his office to mine um, I'll 25 count I'll count it later and report in. Yeah. Because I gotta use the, 20, <laughs> I, gotta, 25 I gotta use the bathroom that's right next I see thing. him every day basically yeah, yeah, yeah. literally yeah sure. every day sure and and I was taken aback by his comments that um, a designated outdoor refreshment area would not drive new tax revenue or be a good source of new taxes. So what was his rationale for that? He didn't really have one. His rationale is... He didn't say, well, maybe the costs are too much, right? No. That's his, a reason. His, ra his rationale... So what, do we know what that cost is going to be? Do you have a ballpark? We don't. Yeah, because the city hasn't put a, uh, a plan in place to do it. Here's so let me give you some advice. Major concern, major concern on this. Danville is going to put one into play in April. You got Manassas having one. Sure. You got Winchester having one. Sure. You got Richmond talking about one in Scott's edition. Sure. You got Williamsburg talking about one. Almaro County is talking about one. What is going to happen? So the answer, the, the answer, jurisdictions all around Charlottesville have one, and Charlottesville does not. So I would have been comfortable with the answer. And I, I think the world of Lloyd, by the way, 
Yeah, right? I, I love. He's my I friend. Love, I think. The, I think the world of it. But the answer I would have gave you is, oh, I'm going to see how these jurisdictions are doing and cherry pick apart what's working for them and what's not working for them. But let me give you some some thing. It's part of how I've got the conversation changed from affordable housing to housing affordability. It takes time. It takes years to do that. Put together a business plan. I think you've already done this, haven't I, you? I did. I That's have. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah I, I have. Thought. Sorry about that. I, I forgot about that. Put together the numbers, how much revenue could be projected. Did you put the cost side to it? How, yes, yeah. how you could do it, yeah. how it would go about happening. So the other answer, they're probably going to say, well, we don't have the staff, which is normally. So that's so when you come up with a great idea like that, usually the pushback from the jurisdictions is, we don't have the staff for that. Make it a public-private venture. There you go. Get or, Friends of Seville to fund it. Why do you think? Is, no, is not, it, not even that. Get Friends of Seville to fund it and manage it. Isn't it? Exactly. Isn't it a hell of a coincidence that a nonprofit sprung up at exactly the time that a designated outdoor refreshment area is a possibility? And cleaned up a building, thank God. A, a nonprofit that is found that is founded and has a, a member board of the most influential downtown landlords in Charlottesville? And it has the capital to do something that it wants to do? How, is that's that a hell of a coincidence? It's, of course not. So... It's interesting because that's, you know, we're talking about this budget and all this stuff. And um, I had a wake up call once. Um, I won't go into the particular details on it, but it was me trying to get money for the Nassau Street from the city council. And I came in this thing a little bit clear eyed, going, look, you know, this is a great thing. Da -da 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 -da. And I didn't realize how many nonprofits compete for this budget this money and then I realized three four years ago that the path to making this work making this mousetrap we created this land trust model work is not require not depending on money from the government you know my conversation with the government is you know what just don't get in my way right just don't get in our way just don't create don't make rules to stop us to help other people we'll go find the money and I realized that we were able to do this for 20,000 a unit and we produced, we are putting 10 families in 10 homes in 10 months in the county of Albemarle that has not been done for, I think it was like 12 years. Of it. It's just, and it works because we put the right people in the, in, 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 in the, in the like Friends of Seville is doing, the right people at the table. Everybody got out of our way. They went and helped us go ahead and do, and do it. And it's making some, something. So I, I, I'll continue, maybe just because of who I am, I will continue to try to push this rock uphill, but you're right, it gets frustrating. It really does. It, 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 I, you know, truth be known, we had a little bit of, a, a little bit of a, a, an open my heart moment last Friday at the end of the show. Um, Yona was asking me this morning, why are you, you know, because I'm a little bit down actually the last couple of weeks last week or so, and I'm just, you know, my comment was, and I've actually got a land trust board meeting today, or a uh, meeting today, and I'm just tired. I'm I've been doing this beating my head against the wall and the drum to change this narrative that you said, and, and I love you with all my heart and soul, but you have no idea what effect it has on me when you say that affordable housing is, is, a, is a buzzword. I, I would rather And I know be, that's not directed towards me. I, I know that. Let, let me get this yeah, out. I know that's not please. directed towards me on that end of it. Um, but it's like, you know, you think to yourself, you know what? F. He's right. It is, I am right. You know. I'm 100% right. And, and Everyone knows that. But. And I feel for you. I'm empathetic but, for you. But, but then. But then I write a contract. I sign a contract this morning for a teacher. Okay. You're talking Nassau? No, this is over at uh, Spring Hill Village. Okay. I sign a contract. Where is for, that? Uh, so that's on um, where Avon and Monte, Monticello, Route 20 and Avon come, come okay. together at the, at the end of it. So, so Almore County. It's Almore County, yeah. Okay. I got that one right. Yeah. It's Almore County, right? Uh, but then I sign a contract this morning for a teacher that's making 50% area medium income, a single mom and her daughter that are going to be in a home in May or June, actually June. So you kind of go, all right, well, it's working. But I'll tell you what, brother, it, 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 is, it is hard 
to do that. It's hard to be the one that's banging the table all the time and you get pushed back. We, we are grateful for your efforts. Oh, sorry. Grateful for your efforts. Well, I know you. I know you. I'm just, yeah. I'm just sharing. The reality is you cannot have affordable housing if you raise tax rates, well, if you increase taxes associated with rooftops. Well, you, you can if there's a pool of money. But there's not. And it doesn't have to be private money. It doesn't have to be public money. It can be private money. But there is a possibility of that is if the jurisdictions get, get it right and offer tax relief. Let me, let me throw something else out that way, which I have not been able to get done. And this is going to blow your, your, your head. Do you realize I'm still trying to get the city council not to tax the land trust for its land? And, and what do they do? We're busy right now. We're exactly. tax season. We don't have the resources. We you don't know what have... one of my favorite things about uh, my wife? She is Other than she's smart and gorgeous. Brutally honest. With oh, yeah, me. sure. Yeah, yeah sure. She I... never, ever, ever... Sugarcoats anything. ...blows smoke up my tail. Mm -hmm. And she says, Jerry, you're doing something because you want to make it happen without realizing that it can never happen. Yeah, ooh, that hurts. And you know what? That hurts. In the moment, it stings, but with the benefit of hindsight... She's right. She's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's funny. Um, uh, it's, you're 100% you're right. I've, I've, maybe that's why I'm in a bit of... Uh, a bit of... Uh, <laughs> of um, yeah, uh, Jerry, you're 100% right. Maybe that's why I'm in a bit of... A funk. No, I can't say that. You can say funk? No, we can't. Oh, because of Emily? Because of Emily yeah. Funk. We say, I'm in a Smith. Dispirited? But, no, uh, yeah. You know, it's... It, Yona was asking me this morning, what the hell's wrong with you? And I'm just like, you know... Uh, look, all... The, you, have, you know better than anybody. The app... And I'm trying not to make this about me. Yeah. And I'm just... I love it. No, please. Uh, it's just, you know, Keith and Jerry doing what I love to do with you on that end of it. But you know what? You wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and go, why the F am I spending 30, Jerry, I clock my hours, 30. I know how much you do. 30 to 40 hours a week of phone calls, stuff, to do all this stuff for these multiple things. What, this is just, this is BS. I just came from spending... I just came from spending a week with my granddaughter and my grandson going, well, hold it, <laughs> hold it, <laughs> right? And, but on the flip side, I signed a contract this morning and we're going to help one family, which is great. In Almora County. Yeah, I got the Not the city of Charlotte. Not the city of Charlotte. Almora County. Almora County. So, you know, but yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I applaud your efforts. We're, you know, we're fortunate to have you in the community. So, You're A-plus people. So, I know you work hard at it. Yeah, but city the, of Charlottesville to pipe dream. The uh, cost of land is too expensive. And now more counties becoming that way. Fulvana County is becoming that way, right? The, the, the Buck, I dare say Buckingham eventually is going to come that way. And the city of Charlottesville and the J Dub. See who's outside. I think we have a fan outside that uh, was trying to come in here. You can welcome in if they need to come. Um, I'll close with this. Oh, we'll close. Sorry, I got to go pick up a uh, uh, something from a client here before the next show. And I've got a twelve o'clock meeting. Yeah, so we both got to roll. Jerry, thank you for doing this. Yeah, 100%. When Michael Payne is writing messages on Facebook saying, if we do this project, we won't be able to do any affordable housing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, which project are we talking about? Um, the, the school reconfiguration. Got it. Raising the tax rate. Thank God they've gotten off that ridiculous ledge. Well, I, I, I think that was just inevitable. That was just, a, 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 as you call it, a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah. basically said, if we do school reconfiguration at 10 cent real estate tax rate increase, we're freezing the capital improvement um, budget, budget period. for eight to 10 years. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you but understand what that? You, you get it. You I, I, under, I understand, understand that because yeah. that is always the conversation. Eight to ten years. That is always the conversations of all the jurisdictions. That's why, if you remember, you know everybody get tweaks out about the CIP budget. You know that really doesn't mean that much unless it's funded, right? And you're now saying, well, time out. We're not going to fund it because we've got all these other things. So our priorities have just changed. That's what I'm saying. Our priorities just changed. Yeah. yeah. But that's but but that's part of why you stay up and watch. The, the city council meeting, and, and you got to go, and I, I do, go. I do, unbelievable. Keith, great show. I mean, the engagement was off the charts. I mean, off the charts. Well, I, I, I um, off the charts. I love these Keith and Jerry Batman and Robin shows. They're and, fantastic. 
And um, I love it when I just bring a blank piece of paper and, yeah. we, and we chat. Right. And then you realize that it's 1145, right? Yeah, nice. no kidding. Uh, Nancy Gill, former mayor of Scottsville, live to talk development in and around oh, Scottsville cool. today on the show. Good show. Um, and then Dino Hoxha. Hox, Dino Hocha. Um, of Dino's Pizza, live from Las Vegas at the International Pizza Convention. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> live from the International Pizza oh, Convention. Oh, what a bummer. I'm in a meeting with I, that. I'm uh, going to see if you'll spin some pizzas on oh, the air. Oh, wow, man. Like, literally flip the dough. I love Dino. And the Nancy Gill guy is talking about development in Almaro County. Yeah. Good it's going to be good potentially uh, breaking news today on the program. Good stuff today. Judah Wickhauer, fantastic. Thank you for joining us, guys, on a Tuesday. Take care. Very well done. Yeah. Very well done. Love it.